everybody. So we're out in the forge, we're in the small shop, and I decided I was going to go ahead and dismantle the forge that I had made that I've been forge welding in for a while now. Uh, I'm getting ready to start building the actual forge that's going to be specifically for getting up to welding temperatures. And then this forge I'm going to redo so that once I get everything forge welded, I can use this one to start drawing billets out. It's a little bit larger and I'll have a little bit larger chamber like it currently has. Uh, the one that we're going to be using to getting up to those forge welding temperatures is going to be a smaller forge. Um, so we're going to have the two different forges. But I wanted to go ahead and dismantle this and show y'all the just absolute savagery that happens whenever you start using flux inside a forge that is primarily just soft fire brick. So I'm going to show you kind of the things that I did to help it last as long as possible, but the carnage that has happened inside this forge because of the flux, which again is just borax. Who would have thought something that is a laundry detergent would cause this much damage to stuff like this? So let's go ahead and check it out. So typically this is about as much you know stuff that happens to fire brick like this with the forge going uh, I've done a lot of heat treats and a lot of forging with this this is one of the bricks that just sits on the back right here and close off uh, closes off the chamber and that's typically all you really see from the heat process but y'all can see the bottom here and how bad it is because of all of this just flux that is just absolutely eating away at stuff I mean this is all flux that has just been <laughs> just crumbles now this is the stuff that creates the shell around your billet whenever you flux it to keep the oxygen out so it doesn't oxygen oxidized during the uh, like in the layers in between the layers so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and finish kinda pulling this apart I've already pulled the whole top of it off the back side those came off in whole bricks but we're gonna kinda just see how this goes So look at this. <laughs> it's just melted through there. So I probably won't be able to use most of this side material. Might be able to use some of this for like blocking off the forge and you know putting them right here just as little block offs so I'll probably end up doing that but we'll, of course we're going to keep this material because we can use this for other parts of forge builds now stuff like this again I can end up cutting off this bottom portion where it has just been melted through just cut through this and then keep the main fire brick so square it off and I'll end up keeping this brick for something else I might even go through and make this forge a little bit shorter cut the fire bricks down to where it's not as tall of an internal chamber because I don't need it to be this tall it could be about that tall right there pretty much everything that's going to come in here is going to be long skinny knife material if I was forging like hammers or something like that this internal chamber would be perfectly fine but it's not necessary for it to be this big so again we'll end up reusing these bricks but that is just absolutely crazy how much it eats away at that. 
All right, now here is the bottom. I've got metal plates on the bottom of this. Let's see if I can get this to raise up. So these metal plates that are right here have actually saved my forge a lot. Whenever I first put these in here, they were quite a bit uh, thicker than what they are now, but this is how thin they've been since all that forge welding happening in there. But it is seriously this whole entire centerpiece. If I would have just left it be and didn't add the plates in here, this floor of this forge would have just absolutely dissolved. There's another one of the plates and then we're going to have another one. It's just all that flux. There's the third one. So those plates are the only thing that has kept the bottom of this forge <laughs> from, like I said, just being absolutely dissolved. But you can see the original edge would have been, I'm going to get a brick to work to make it stand out more. The original edge was all the way over here this right here is how much it's eaten through so this little wall right here that's all that was left it had eaten through almost at this point about a third of the way through the forge on both sides so that is absolutely crazy that it's been able to do that but a lot of people will tell you hey if you don't uh, if you're, if you're not paying attention, that flux will just eat through your forge. I wanted to show y'all what the actual aftermath looked like because a lot of people tell you about it, but nobody shows you what it looks like. And let's grab... I'm going to grab this little ruler right here. So... From where the base was, it's eaten enough. So this is this is the, the top of the base right here. It has eaten enough that I can stick my hand in between the uh, the little ruler and that bottom where it's at now. So it has gone the full thickness of my hand right there through the bottom of this forge so if y'all are wondering what it actually looked like the aftermath of this much forge welding and this is just like a month and a half of forge welding just absolutely destroyed this and this is with these plates saving it as much as possible if i wasn't using these this would already be pretty much gone as it sits so it has saved it enough to where it's only about an inch of this material. <clears throat> and this material is two and a half inches thick. So right now, this part is about an inch and a half. And then it just goes the plate that's under this and then the top of this work rest. So it was getting to a point to where the, this work rest was getting super hot. And this is just wood separated by steel and then the 
the blocks itself, the bricks. So we get to a point where this was smoking from the underneath. <laughs> but guys, hopefully, uh, you know, this lets y'all know what to what you're getting into whenever you do this. I'm gonna pull y'all back up here real quick. Like I said, I feel like a lot of people tell you about the devastation that happens from flexing inside your forge, but nobody really shows you what that looks like. And I wanted y'all to see what it looks like so that you understood what you were getting into if you get into this process of forge welding. I know that, again, it's one of those deals where everybody wants to do this and it's awesome, but you could go through the process of making this beautiful forge and then you do this a few times, it's no longer beautiful after that. So uh, I'm gonna have one set up to where um, the small forge has the hard bricks on the bottom and then the soft bricks on the side and everything. And I can replace those hard bricks as the you know forge welding happens and everything and I start just absolutely dissolving things. It'll be a lot easier for me to kind of change and it, swap things out but guys hopefully this was helpful if it was let me know in the comment section if you thought that was pretty interesting let me know that as well guys that's pretty much the end of this uh, i will be making two new forges with a rolling rack and all that stuff um, so i'll probably show some of that stuff in a future video but there you go guys that's it if you would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video or one of my other videos. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell. And guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.